What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads. And what we have here for you today is a little bit of a 76ers beatdown against the Brooklyn Nets. Before we begin, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, comment if you'd like to, because I enjoy speaking with you guys. Now, the 76ers win 120 to 97 in Brooklyn after a, a tough loss against the Miami Heat. They respond with a dominating performance, which is what you needed to see from this team. You know that the Brooklyn Nets is a squad that is struggling this year. They really don't have many pieces at all. You have Big Ja there, who actually made a pretty good play on Robert Covington, which I know fans are not happy about because you're supposed to see good defense at a Robert Covington, so they say. So anyway, going in a little bit of this game, we had a lot of bench players logging in some minutes because it was a game that was kind of a blowout, but that's fine. That's what you want to see. I know it was a little bit boring watching, but think about it. The 76ers are at a point right now where it's boring to watch because they're dominating? Think about that. I would absolutely trade where we are now for back to those seven win squads and 20 win squads any day of the week. Now dissecting this game a little bit. Obviously, like I said, the starters didn't log too many minutes. Ben Simmons, 11 points, 6 boards, 6 assists in 29 minutes. Joel Embiid, 21 points, 8 boards, 9 of 17 shooting, 1 for 2 from behind the arc in 26 minutes. And one of the things that we've been dissecting with him was, does he need some rest? Is he experiencing a brick wall because he's not used to playing this many minutes, this long, th like the, the amount of games that he's been playing? Is he used to this? And I thought that this coaching staff and, and the head coach, Brett Brown, was going to make a decision that it was time to rest Joel and beat a little bit. But they didn't, and they played him. And you know what? I kind of like that. That shows, listen, you're a professional. You're going to have to go through these experiences with your body. And man up. And that's exactly what he did, shooting 9-17. to A little bit better night than we're used to seeing with him the last few games, which is nice to see. Dario, my boy Dario. I love this man. I love him. 18.6 boards. He logged in 24 minutes, 8 of 11 shooting. He just does a little bit of everything. He brings a presence that is scrappy, but he can score. He can take it to the hoop. He can shoot. He literally brings a presence that is beautiful. I love it. J.J. Redick. 5 of 10 shooting, 12 points. And Robert Covington hit three three-pointers, had 19 points and 5 rebounds. Moving on to the bench. Like I said, Ilya Sova, 27 minutes logged in. He had 11 points. TJ McConnell logged in almost 30 minutes. He had 10 points and he even had a nice little crossover shimmy jump shot. He is creating a jump shot. We've been through this before, but it's so awesome to watch. I understand it's Brooklyn. I understand they stink. But the fact that TJ McConnell is out there putting on moves, man, I love it. I absolutely love it. Bell and Nelly logging in 25 minutes. Only hitting one three-pointer, though, but it's okay. Because it was one of those games where, eh, you just blow him out of the water. Looking at... The Brooklyn Nets. I mean, nothing really there. But I just want to see a little Jaleel Okafor only given six minutes in four points. And their best player, obviously, D'Angelo Russell doing a little bit of work. Logging in 26 minutes. I feel bad for this Brooklyn Nets team, though. That's got to be frustrating. That's got to be tough to sit there and play through these these games every single night. And I know we were there. I know we were there a few, few years back. But... Now that we're on the other side, I can't imagine going through that again. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine. So looking at where the 76ers are after this 120-97 to blowout against the Brooklyn Nets, we are sitting in the sixth seed. But man, we are not far off. We are now 36-29. and The Cleveland Cavaliers are in the fourth spot. They're 38-28. and Boys. Boys. We just got to continue to win. Now, the Indiana Pacers now moved into the third spot at 39-28. and 28. And who do we see Tuesday night at the Wells Fargo Center? 
I will be there at that game attending. I got my tickets a few nights ago. I am stoked. And one of the things I was concerned about was I hope Joel Embiid doesn't get sat because he's being tired. But there's no way he gets sat for an Indiana Pacers game at home over a Brooklyn Nets squad. There's just no way. So uh, I, I firmly believe that he will not be rested. But that's a big tilt. I mean, this is a true test. Sweet. We we roasted Brooklyn in Brooklyn. We're supposed to. Now let's see what we can do against a team who has two more wins than us and three more wins. I'm sorry. Three more wins than us and, and third in the Eastern Conference. But the Wells Fargo Center is a tough barn to play in. So I want to see them come out ready to play. I want to hear the Wells Fargo going nuts. You even heard on the telecast yesterday in Brooklyn, Eagles chance, Sixers chance. It's beautiful the way this fan base has reacted to the squad. It really is. There really isn't that much to talk about with this demanding win against the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, seriously, they're they're just a team that you're supposed to blow out of the water, and that's exactly what we did. So you got to be happy with that. You absolutely have to be happy. You move on. Tuesday night, Indiana Pacers. It's going to be a great tilt. You got Victor Oladipo, who is an all-star. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see the Indiana Pacers come into our building and try and take us down. I have confidence in this squad. I do. We need Joel to get back to his old ways, which I think he will. So with that being said, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, comment if you'd like to, because I enjoy speaking with you guys. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you guys next time.